So the workhorse mathematical idea underneath the method, it's still finite elements. So what is finite elements is composed of essentially two ingredients, a function space, usually like the polynomials, right? The mesh does nothing more than tell you where to put little functions in space so that you can approximate a solution in terms of those functions. That's called a function space. And so we, in a, in a finite element method, you have these two ingredients. You have a function space that's usually defined by a mesh, and you have what's called a weak form, or an energy state, some, something that describes what equilibrium looks like in the system. You take your mesh, that function space, you discretize the weak form to generate the matrices, right? Stiffness matrices, residual vectors, forcing vectors, mass matrices, all of that kind of stuff, okay? That discretization process, the matrices that pop out, the entries in those matrices, their values are determined by the types of functions that you use. So this is traditional FBA, right? This is linear half functions. We work in a smooth spline regime. And that's a very fundamental change. Mathematically, you can show that smooth higher order splines are actually the best approximation space that you can possibly choose. So like if you want to pick the most powerful function space for a, pro for a problem, maybe you use functions that are C4, which is continuity level four, right? So they have four continuous derivatives, but they're polynomial degree five. And that property of those functions, their efficiency and their robustness completely changed the world and is why that research domain has become so dominant. It's why scientists are so excited about it.